December. If you're joining us tonight, my name is Patricia Murioki. Welcome on Y254 Updates. And tonight we're talking about a very interesting topic. It's something that the moment you mention love, the moment you mention relationships, you are very sure that you're going to have a conversation around all that. And tonight we talk about conscious relationships, not the normal uh, boy meets girl or girl meets boy. I would just try to see what do we mean when we talk about our conscious relationship. We try to evaluate tonight do we have uh, are people engaging in conscious relationships as we speak uh, for people who are dating or someone who's watching us uh, tonight how would you term, describe rather your relationship is it a healthy relationship is it a place where you feel that um you're growing does the other person bring out the best in you or are you in a situation where you're suffocated, if I, may if I may use that name. Talk to us across our social media platforms, that is at Y254 channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. And to help us talk about this uh, tonight, we start with the ladies. I'm planning to have a series on relationships during the entire month of December. And next time, we're going to have some gen uh, gentlemen to also share their perception and their take on relationships. But tonight, we have Angela Katua, who is uh, the founder, Angelique Achievers and also a relationship coach. We also have Emma Mongute, who is a founder of Amand Love Foundation. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank uh, relationships and love, this, uh, it is something literally that um, sparks a lot of conversations and people have different uh, opinions when it comes to what uh, you would define a healthy relationship with us. But tonight I want us to do it very differently we're just having a conversation and the first thing i would like to ask you um angela what is a conscious relationship because i'm sure there's someone who yeah. is hearing about conscious relationship today they have had relationships but they've really never taken time or uh, it's the first time they're getting to hear the term conscious relationships how do we define that a conscious relationship is a is a relationship that um is is inclined towards having a meaning to mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so what is your meaning to mm -hmm. or what is your why into wanting to have that kind of that, the kind of relationship you want mm -hmm. and you also need to define the kind of relationship that you want to have mm -hmm. because there are so many ki different kinds of relationships yeah. if you want to get married do you want to be in a polygamous marriage mm -hmm. or do you want to be in a you know monogamous mm -hmm. or do you want to be in uh what what is it uh, this uh, this one uh, <laughs> <to be> an <laughs> yeah but you need to have your reason mm -hmm. you need to have your intentions uh, very clear and it can only be defined as conscious when you're very clear about really what you really want mm -hmm. so it, there must be some consciousness there must be some awareness mm -hmm. a lot of it actually about self-awareness not awareness of the other, the other person, person. Mm -hmm. because it has to start from me mm -hmm. what do i want for me to be able to settle down with anyone what am i looking for and can this person um be that person who can give me uh, or who can who can uh, we can build this kind of relationship that i'm looking for mm -hmm. with so i need to be you need to be very conscious i, I mean to be let me not use the same term mm -hmm. but you need to be um to be very clear with your why mm -hmm. yeah reason is very important okay mm -hmm. uh emma before you get to tell us uh, what a conscious relationship means to you uh do you think that people are engaging in conscious relationships Currently, the young people who are so happy and booed up, do you think those relationships are conscious relationships? Um, so my answer would be a yes mm -hmm. and no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So depending um, on the individuals, mm -hmm. uh, were they raised in a um, healthy setup mm -hmm. where, you know, their parents um, embodied healthy lifestyles and mm -hmm. how to live mm -hmm. or not? So basically majorly we are all la all raised with trauma mm -hmm. somehow um, yeah. childhood traumas mm -hmm. and they affect us so largely i will say no mm -hmm. and yes so mm -hmm. it's it, it's it, there's no clear cut answer to that depends on how the somebody's upbringing was mm -hmm. yes okay mm -hmm. so what is a conscious relationship to you so how I will d define a conscious relationship, it's a relationship where two people um, come together 
knowing very well that um, what they want, the negotiables and non-negotiables are being met, uh, knowing who they are, um, where they, the direction rather the relationship is going to take. See, when we are young, decisions are made for, um, for us. Yeah. We don't choose the clothes we wear, we don't choose the food we eat, mm -hmm. we don't also choose uh, basically even the school we go to, mm -hmm. or even um, sometimes the people we interact with because our parents are like, no, don't talk to that one, yeah. you can keep that one and stuff. But then as an adult, you get to make a deliberate choice mm -hmm. of who you want to be with mm -hmm. and the direction uh, the relationship should take. Mm -hmm. So to me, a conscious relationship is a happy relationship where there is no confusion. The two people are aware that they are in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Because again, sometimes uh, we've had scenarios where <laughs> the lady knows she's in a relationship, yeah. the guy does not. Yeah. You get okay. so, vice versa. <laughs> or vice versa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it really needs to be uh, both parties rather need mm -hmm. to be aware that they are in a relationship mm -hmm. and the direction that relationship is um, taking. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, so now that we've given a definition, I'm sure that uh, people watching us can now really understand what this entire conversation is going to be all about. That we're not sitting here to talk about the normal things that you've had uh, before. It is just trying to uh, like create something or bring about a very different pers uh, perspective rather uh, on what uh, healthy relationships um, uh, look like. So Angela, mm. how do then now do we build a conscious relationship? How do I even identify a conscious partner? Because a conscious relationship and a conscious partner, those are two different things. So how now do I start that journey of identifying a, a conscious partner if, 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 it's a, if, if it's a boy looking for a girl or a girl looking for a boy? First of all, you need to understand that the person you're going to attract in, into your life is you, mm -hmm. is the mirror of you. Mm -hmm. So you need to know that um, the, person, the kind of person that I am will determine the kind of relationship that I'm going to get. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for, you know, the holier than thou mm -hmm. guy or lady, mm -hmm. you need to ask yourself, am I, am I also holier than, than the thou? Man. Or mm -hmm. what qualities do I have? What, mm -hmm. are, what am I looking at? Mm -hmm. So you can uh, maybe write down the qualities of a person that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And then you don't just go out look for that person, but first, uh, get to understand whether you really have this these qualities yourself mm -hmm. So you have to first of all work on yourself for you to be really conscious because what we are looking for what, what we are looking at tonight I think is uh, being able to come up with good relationships that yes. are going to flourish mm -hmm. that are going to help us grow you mm -hmm. know uh, the, that are going to be maybe if we are a partner we're going to be going to the same direction yeah. but not you go to this direction and I go to mine and uh, we meet somewhere mm -hmm. or we don't meet and then you know it crumbles mm -hmm. and this this now defines the kind of relationships that we have around most of the re relationships we have around we are all keen to look around and see what is happening mm -hmm. But now to build a good relationship, you need to be yourself, first of all, work on yourself. And you can never work on something that you don't know. I always talk about uh, being self-aware, mm -hmm. working on yourself. So we need to build our own personal development mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, to just look at ourselves consciously. And before you can even get yourself to to even start a relationship. Remember that, like she said, that you come from a, a, a foundation. Yeah. How was your foundation? Mm -hmm. What are the wounds that you've grown up with? And you need to clear up these wounds. You, mm -hmm. need, to, you need to heal. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs healing yeah. because everyone has been traumatized by something. Everybody has a past. And we cannot say that my past has just been smooth. No life has a smooth line, and mm -hmm. uh, except the dead one. Mm -hmm. That's why when we die, <laughs> the machine yeah. uh, goes a straight line. Mm -hmm. But when we are alive, it's up and down, up and down. So we need to know that it is the norm of life to be able to, I mean, to, to go through the, the pains and sufferings of life mm -hmm. or whatever it is that we've gone through. But now you have to work on yourself, heal yourself, mm -hmm. um, yeah, get to a place where now you are at peace with yourself, with your past, so that you don't bring in something, someone to your life and start bleeding on them while they were not there when you were getting hurt. Okay. So yeah, building a relation, a, a conscious relationship has to start with self-awareness mm -hmm. and being able to 
have uh, or make peace with your past. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as I was going through uh, different uh, sources of information to prepare for this uh, show, uh, sorry for for this show, uh, the someone talked about um, you get into a relationship without being aware of who you are, just as Angela has finished talking about a self-awareness. And you'll end up, whatever definition this person is going to give to you, or whatever things they're going to throw at you, is what you now start thinking as your definition. So what are the dangers, um, Emma, of getting into a relationship when you lack self-awareness, when you're not mature enough to really know what it takes to really be in that situation? Um, okay, so I'd, I'd first start by saying that, you know, there's societal conditioning mm -hmm. of what um, a good relationship should look like mm -hmm. or what to expect in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And there's this concept of when you're getting into a relationship, it's a 50-50. Like, you are half, I'm coming also as half and to complete you, yeah. which is a very wrong concept. Yeah. You know, uh, essentially, a healthy relationship should be where one where we are we are whole as we are. Mm -hmm. We are coming for interdependence, mm -hmm. not codependency. So wow. the yes. So the danger of um, uh, having that mindset um, is you get into a relationship first. You are not aware of self. As she has said, self-awareness is very important. Mm -hmm. So when you are aware of yourself, um, what uh, li limitations, uh, drawbacks you have, positives that you carry, um, and what you are looking for, yeah, mm -hmm. it is easier, mm -hmm. you know, to have a healthy relationship. So sit, no, this is what I want. This is uh, what I don't want. This is what I can live with. This is what I can't live with, and then. Um, find a way of having it work for you mm -hmm. uh, because when you look at social construct and what uh, <laughs> what other people want for you then you end up losing it mm -hmm. yeah uh, when we talk about um, being aware of who you are we know that for us to also have healthy relationships we need to get to a point where uh, we are not scared of being vulnerable and most of the times the woman is not going to be scared of vulnerability but the the man will find himself uh, like old in on it they don't want to uh, express themselves in a certain way because we would term them as weak and strong men are not expecting to cry strong men sometimes are not even expecting to be emotional by the society uh, this society that i keep on asking i wish it was a person that mm. i could go and ask a million and one questions yeah. so uh, angela what do you think um when it comes to vulnerability to what extent uh, are you supposed to be to get vulnerable or to be vulnerable with your partner and how important or what impact does the vulnerability bring to making sure that we are having conscious relationships being vulnerable is is power mm -hmm. uh, it's it's something that is going to even bring you out better mm -hmm. than hiding you know hiding yourself or not bringing out the, uh, yourself the way you're supposed to be mm -hmm. because uh, when you're vulnerable you are, you're able to express yourself mm -hmm. you're able to share mm -hmm. you're able to own up mm -hmm. you know owning up is something that is very big yeah. in relationships mm -hmm. many people don't like even owning up my own you know even the, you know those things that i only it's only me who, who knows, knows yeah i know to self <laughs> yeah you don't you still don't want to look at yourself and mm -hmm. identify yourself with these things and get to know that they happened to me or this is how i am but you want you still want to hide them inside you mm -hmm. from yourself and mm -hmm. there are you know there are people that you can never lie to yeah you can never lie to yourself you can never lie to the level and you can never you lie, lie to, to god. god yeah so <laughs> lying to yourself is you know it, it doesn't help you you need to just be vulnerable enough to even accept yourself as you are mm -hmm. and that's why I, I always talk about like still want to go back to self-awareness when you are aware of yourself when you're aware of who you of, of who you are mm -hmm. you will not fear being vulnerable mm -hmm. and being vulnerable also makes the other person to be able to you know to bring out their weak points mm -hmm. because they know that i can be safe here mm -hmm. but when when you start hiding they also hide mm -hmm. and then of course now you don't have a unit you you're going to be like in a in a place where you're competing or you live your own way I live my own way but you need to be in a place where you feel very comfortable mm -hmm. because a conscious relationship can only be built where you're very comfortable with yourself 
you know even with your looks with the whatever and with your thoughts mm -hmm. even when you know that you're not saying uh, the right thing just say it and you'll be corrected so be, be free to to share with yourself and mm -hmm. also the other person should be also be free okay. to share with the other partner oh. tonight we're talking about conscious relationships and so far we've talked about vulnerability we've tried to define what a conscious relationship really means and now we get to dive now into the details that i think uh will not be fair if we don't talk about them tonight talk to us across our social media platforms that is at y254 channel you can also reach me at patricia murioki so uh, safe relationships we've seen people stay in relationships and they can literally tell it is not healthy uh, it is not doing me any good um, but I want it I want us to address it in this way relationships are not always going to be fun there'll be the misunderstandings there'll be the fights and the conflicts and all that but how are we now how can we be able to address that how can we be able to fight in a healthy way and make sure that even through the fight and through the conflict i still feel my partners care for me i still feel my partners love for me and this is someone who is not like we are not fighting each other we're just trying to fix us and have a safe relationship angela Conversation and communication is very important mm -hmm. in relationships. Mm -hmm. So you need to, to talk, talk it out. Mm -hmm. And don't talk at mm -hmm. the other person. Mm -hmm. Talk with the other person. Mm -hmm. So talk when it is right, at the, the time is right. Mm -hmm. Talk at the, ta the right um, mood. Mm -hmm. you know, you, you right tone. Yeah, the right tone. Mm -hmm. So you have to, to get to know um, your partner and know what they like and when they like to have such a conversation mm -hmm. and you can even uh, suggest and let them you know also uh, be able to tell you when they will be ready to share mm -hmm. or to talk about it mm -hmm. whatever it is so conflicts are no more yeah they will always happen mm -hmm. because there are not two people who will be married or mm -hmm. will be relating in a romantic relationships and they were brought up together but I also feel <laughs> conflicts have a limitation Yes, of course. Yeah, there's a, there's you, a should, line. you should you should be having conflicts that build you. Mm -hmm. When when we are differing, we should be able to to sit down and talk and look at where is the problem, where is it coming from, mm -hmm. how how can we find out what the root is, mm -hmm. and how can we kill this root? Okay, it's not supposed to be oh you did this and I did this, I did not do this, you did. It's not about who is righteous and who is not. Mm -hmm. It's about how can we together work on this and get a solution. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about, uh, Emma, you mentioned uh, traumas. And when we went for the break, we kind of like had a very small discussion about uh, traumas and how people literally overlook that. What do you think, what advice do you have for people watching us tonight who have never taken the time to really understand that trait in them that makes every person complain. They don't try to look where does it come from. They only again say this is who I am, this is how like God created me and stuff. But we know it mm -hmm. is not who you are. So how do we address uh, our traumas with the intention of being better uh, in relationships? Great. So first, probably we start by understanding what trauma is. Mm -hmm. And trauma is an overwhelming experience mm -hmm. that happens to anyone at any point of their life mm -hmm. that, is the, that is too much for them to handle, mm -hmm. that is stored in their subconscious. Mm -hmm. And it manifests itself in people's relationships and in their lives, mm -hmm. either consciously or, un or unconsciously. Mm -hmm. And so... To carry trauma um, and not be aware of it mm -hmm. is um, something that is very dangerous because sometimes people walk around thinking they are okay, yet they are not. They, they are walking with open wounds and they are bleeding on every person. Mm -hmm. And they think that every, uh, every person they meet is the problem. They don't ever stop to think, wait. So five people have the same reaction towards yeah. me. Uh -huh. Probably the problem could be me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, in Africa, we don't... Um, we don't normally think that probably we are the way we are because of uh, what happened to us mm -hmm. and because of the traumas that we carry mm -hmm. and also to just note that um, 
even beating a baby, a child at a young age is traumatizing. So there's this common verse people say that uh, spare the rod, spoil the child, mm -hmm. which I feel has been, you know, taken overboard. Remember when you're a shepherd, when you have that rod, you don't use it to hit the, um, the animals. Mm -hmm. You use it to shepherd. Shepherding means you just direct them yeah. to one place, move not it. to hit. <laughs> you get. So hitting somebody is traumatizing, being ignored, being shouted at, being mocked, being taunted, uh, broken promises, uh, staying in a home where you've seen parents sick all the time, mm -hmm. staying in a home where you know um, you've lacked. Poverty is also traumatizing. Yeah. Staying in a home where you don't have mm -hmm. and where you see a world of people who are living and you are surviving, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that, that also causes trauma. And so it's very important for people to uh, assess themselves, to just sincerely sit and think, because you cannot lie to yourself. Mm -hmm. We all know what we are good at, what we are not good at, what we could do better. And so it, it's very important that all of us take that initiative to take time to really know ourselves and get to know our problems and seek help. Mm -hmm. There's no shame. Help yeah. is out there. There's no shame in um, seeking help. Patricia, we go through so much in life. Mm -hmm. It's true. And everything that we go through shapes us. Mm -hmm. But importantly, the voice that, the things that we tell ourselves, the voice in our heads is essentially what matters. Mm -hmm. And it's what can doom you or make you. So it's very important that we acknowledge where we have um, misgivings mm -hmm. and seek help. Help is out there. There is no shame in seeking help. And also for parents to normalize uh, getting help for their kids. For example, a parent who uh, loses a spouse mm -hmm. at a very young age. Uh, normally, according to psychology, children cannot process grief until they are nine years old. So imagine losing a spouse and there is a child who is below the age uh, nine years old. So we normally think the person who needs support is the the spouse who yeah. has lost uh, the, their significant other we don't think of that child however that also affects them so i think it's it's high time as africans as kenyans we normalized that um you know things happen in our childhood and to also seek help okay yeah. uh let us talk about uh, society pressures obviously in mm -hmm. society i literally don't <laughs> like i mean a space in my life where I'm avoiding at least society expects me mm -hmm. to do this and all that. But we have society pressure when it comes to relationships and we also have social media pressure when it comes to relationship. Uh, that is, uh, at a certain age, every auntie at home is wondering where is, where is he, we cannot see him, or where is she, we cannot see her, what is happening, what is wrong with you. So how now do we have people getting into relationships and not even they like come and stay and stuff or dating marriages because they want to please their parents they want to please their friends you've seen a couple on social media or lovey dovey and all that and you want to do that for people watching us to tonight angela and they are kind of falling into that pressure how can we limit ourselves and define things that work for us without expecting for this society to define these things for us you know, to, uh, society it speaks a lot. Mm -hmm. they, they, there's a lot. There's always so much that they have. And to society is never to contented say. with whatever. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I realized. Yeah. My life in my life, I think, uh, ha having bro been brought up by you know Christian parents mm -hmm. uh, from a village mm -hmm. that where everyone meets you and says, "Oh, this Katua's daughter," mm -hmm. because of the face, you mm -hmm. know, they know you. So th they will ask you uh, where. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like marriage is a trophy. <laughs> yeah, like it's a trophy. So uh -huh. I think uh, having made those mistakes myself mm -hmm. and being, um, I don't know, complying to the pressures of the society, mm -hmm. I have suffered. I have, uh, let me not say, say, say suffered, but I have gone through tra uh, traumas. Mm -hmm. uh, I found myself as a single mother and now. Uh, so that I please my parents and my society and my community, I found myself now falling in, uh, falling into another trap of a marriage mm -hmm. that broke up within the first year, mm -hmm. and I had not even taken time to know this guy. Mm -hmm. For me, it was like I have gotten my husband, 
we are going to mm -hmm. into it and i put everything i had into it including money mm -hmm. and i was by the time i woke up i was i just had a suitcase of clothes and so, two babies mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. to take care of mm -hmm. so it's um you can see what the society can do to you okay so it's good to look at yourself and even after now uh getting myself together and uh, you know now I, i'm living the right way the society still yeah. demands you know they're still, they're talking, still want. You know? <laughs> yeah the, the, the society Societal still keep demands. on wanting so it has to be your journey it has to be you okay. you must know that your life is yours okay you're not here to mm -hmm. please anyone but mm -hmm. after all you can never please everybody okay even your own parents you can never be able to please okay so yeah uh, as, as you wind up emma society and social media and by this age we want children by this age you want you married by this age you want to do what 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 your thoughts on that um so my thought is this even parents who have kids like you say you have two kids mm -hmm. you realize they're very different mm -hmm. we uh, it's very wrong to expect uh, different people mm -hmm. as many as we are in the world mm -hmm. to fit in um, in a cocoon mm -hmm. and act a certain way okay. speak a certain way mm -hmm. do things a certain way so then we are acceptable mm -hmm. um, it's a call to everyone to accept being misunderstood mm -hmm. and just being you there's nothing as freeing mm -hmm. as just being authentically you mm -hmm. doing you mm -hmm. as bad as bad or as good as that may sound mm -hmm. doing you and being uh, authentic to yourself okay. because you owe it to yourself you owe happiness to yourself mm -hmm. because by the end of the day you have you to live with for the rest of your life yeah Absolutely. It's a personal oh. responsibility. It is. It is by the end of the day. Okay, you have you to live with for the rest of yeah. your life. So this brings us to the end of this conversation tonight. And I would say it has been very beautiful and amazing. But I'm going to have you again because there's quite a lot that we've not covered. But this is what I'll tell you. Uh, if a relationship gets to compromise your happiness, which is the most important thing in, in your life, then get out. You don't need to be in a place just for people to see you there, but you're crashing or you're not all. And if a relationship compromises your mental awareness, the same thing, please choose you first. Yep. Thank you very much for being with us. You'd rather be single and happy than in a relationship and very horrible. Good night. My name is Patricia Mayuki. Have a very good night. Mm -hmm.